Gutter Trash is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. Welcome to Gutter Trash, episode 133, Pain For It, by Chester Brown. My name is Eric. My name is Jason. Welcome to this episode. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I really like the what you've done with this episode. It looks very, very uh, inviting. Yeah, I just uh, cleaned it. Yeah? I just cleaned it. Sp- it's a little spring cleaning, a little late, but yeah, yeah. better late than never. Yeah, it's actually still technically spring. Is it really? Uh-huh. But it's it's been really hot. It has been incredibly hot. Mm-hmm. It has been ball meltingly hot. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll agree there. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but yes, it is actually still spring. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. Good job. Yeah, thank keep, you. Keeping thank up, you. Uh, keeping up to the uh, seasonal expectations. No, well, keeping up appearances. Yeah, because my heart is not in this. Your your heart isn't. No, no. I'm sorry. It's mostly your fault. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fair. <laughs> What's the other, like, 30%? Is that anybody else in particular? Um, My mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She uh, she listened to the show and uh, told me to stop. Really? Yeah. That seems so, accurate. That's pretty worthless. Oh. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's uh, kind of... Kind of, kind of giving me a buzzkill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know my mom has heard me say, I'm going to go record a podcast tonight. Yeah. But she doesn't know what that means. And she's never asked. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she thinks you're in a new band. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I guess that's what the kids call songs these days. <laughs> yeah, they're going to go record a new podcast. <clears throat> you know how bad is good. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Podcast yeah. is sung. Just the street lingo. Yep. Because we're G'd up from the feet up. Because, because we're, because we read a lot of Ghetto Man comics. <laughs> <laughs> that is a joke. Everyone's gonna get me three months. Uh, when DC releases Ghetto Man number one. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> New DC relaunch. Yeah. Can't wait for it. Uh, I hear Jeff Lemire is writing that one. Ghetto Man. Yeah. Ghetto Man. Yeah. I hope that isn't, you know. <clears throat> Slow him down creatively on his other titles. Uh, well, Sweet Tooth is canceled. Because Ghetto Man's his right, new yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's his new passion. Oh, cool. In fact, he is so passionate about it, uh, he has uh, gone back and denied that he ever wrote anything uh, prior to, to doing any DC work. Really? Yeah, so like Essex County, done. Never happened. Yeah. Hmm. He's just washing his hands. Yep, just washing his hands. He sold the movie rights to, to uh, one of the stories in Essex County, and uh, he's done. Wow. He's not having anything to do with it. No, I'm just going to focus on Ghetto Man. Ghetto Man all the way. That's going to, that's going to, it's a cash cow. Yeah, yeah. yeah it really is. <laughs> a huge franchise potential. Oh, I see what he's thinking, because, like, the economy is kind of going down the toilet. There'll be more people living in ghettos all across the nation. Right, so it's going to be, you know, a lot more popular, a lot more uh, relatable. relatable. Yeah, right, yeah right. exactly. And then, like, you know, when the movie comes out and the toys and everything, you know, I mean, he's... Because cause Ghetto Man is so obscure that uh, he's going to be able to just build, like, an entire, like, supporting oh my cast. God. It'll be villains. like The Simpsons. So, like, you know, when, when uh, the movie comes out, I mean, he's going to see mad royalty checks, you know, because they're going to have to use all of his characters. Oh, my God. Other than, you know, Ghetto Man, because right. he didn't create them. But, right. You know. He's just going to reinvent them, though. Right, right. Re- or relaunch him. Relaunch. Relaunch. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was a close. Yeah. But, uh, you know, of course, uh, the, in the credits of the movie, they're, they're gonna say credited, to, you know, Get a Man Created by Jack Kirby. Right. You know, well, yeah. uh, story was, by Jeff Lemire. Yeah. yeah, that was, uh, yeah, cause back when Jack Kirby and, uh, um, Stan Laurel used to work on the romance right, comics right. together. Yeah. Um, yeah, they kind of revolutionized romance comics and they introduced Ghetto Man. Right. And, uh, huge hit. Yep. Uh, turned the genre on its head. Yep. And, uh, yeah, the rest is history. Exactly. 
Well, good luck, Jeff Lemire. Good luck, Jeff Lemire. We miss you already. <laughs> yeah. So how you doing? I'm okay. <laughs> Uh, we got this here comic that uh, we're we're gonna discuss. Mm, yeah, and uh, because I am uh, rapidly forgetting everything about it. Oh well. Uh, let's stop with this bullshitting around. Yeah, just get in. And just get into it. Okay, I'm into it already. Because I have, I had things I want to say about this comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, like, you know, it's been a week and I decided not to reread it when I probably should have. <laughs> All right. And uh, I've uh, forgotten most of everything that I thought about it. Okay. It's uh, been a couple weeks since I've read it, too, yeah, so don't worry. worry. Neither one of us. Don't worry, neither one of Don't worry, listener. Neither one of us have anything appropriate to say. <laughs> or relative or anything. Uh, so, yeah. Pain for it. Chester Brown. Drawn in quarterly. Graphic novel. 200 some plus pages. His first ever. His first, uh, uh full official original graphic novel. Yeah. Because everything else he's done has, uh, just been serialized. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, his first major work since, uh. Louis Riel. Back in. Oh, man, it's been years. 2003, oh, no. 2002. Uh. I'd say, yeah, ish, 2003 ish. I mean, other than, of course, the Fantastic Four number nine commission that he did. I'm sure he's done a lot of commissions. (laughs) How else is he going to pay for the sex? Right. (laughs) Uh, spoiler. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so when, well, didn't you say that uh, he doesn't really do commissions, though? Oh, no, no, he, uh, his thing is he won't sell any of his original art. Okay. Like f- any published original art. But um like whenever I wrote to him, I had read that and he but he you know, he said if you want any page of his original art from any of his comics, mm-hmm. just write to him and he'll redraw the page. Uh, and uh you know and he you know, he's he's warning you in advance it's not the actual thing that was printed right. but it's the guy that did the actual thing that's printed redrawing it for right. you because he's like kind of obsessive and keeps all of his original art. Right. I, uh, by reading this book, would not for an instant think that he was obsessive about anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, he just, uh, he's just off the cuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't free, uh, meditate things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, uh, not for an instant would I think that, uh, he would be willing to just completely recreate art he's already done. Yeah. To sell. <clears throat> it's, it's kind of strange. Yeah. I have, uh, I've tried redrawing things that I've drawn before, and, uh, it's, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not, uh. It's not fun. It's uh, it doesn't seem like it would be fun. Like kind of pointless. And that's that's why I was like, well, shit. If he's, <clears throat> if he's gonna, if I'm gonna pay him to redraw something, right. I might as well pay him to redraw something he's never drawn before. Right. And and that's like he's the whole reason I started the Fantastic Four uh, number nine right. project. Yeah. Yeah. Because of his unwillingness to sell his original. Yeah. If Chester Brown would sell original art. Right. There, there would be, be no Venice there for number nine project because I would just own a page of <clears throat> Ed the Happy Clown or something. Right, and and uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, I think you even said this before that uh, Chester Brown is a fairly big influence on you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, is it safe to say that that's the reason you even draw your autobiographical comic? I I think that's the first autobiographical stuff I ever read was because my was, my brother was a big fan of his when I was growing up. Yeah, and I remember reading. Uh, like gummy fur when I was inappropriately young. Well, right. at least according to the the like, right? Yeah, right, yeah. What you're supposed to be. Um, but yeah, yeah, he is a huge influence on me. Yeah. Um, well, that's where uh, I think uh, this book is going to come in here, because uh, it, it's been pointed out that uh, when we review books, that uh, you tend to be uh. Uh, overtly forgiving about uh, things that are that are picked, and I tend to be overtly critical. Oh, okay. Uh, and I'm coming into this thinking that you are 
a thousand percent gonna l- that that you loved this book more than life itself, uh, and that uh, you're you're not going to uh, see any way to criticize any parts of it, uh, because because again he is like such an influence to you. All right, all right. That, I mean he's you know, safe to say he's your hero. Uh, he's a, a, a hero. hero. A, a hero. A hero. Yeah. Uh. And I'm sure you probably think that, uh, by how I'm starting this, that, uh, I absolutely, uh, hated this. Right, right. Of course. Uh, well, that's how, that's how I expect every, uh, episode to start. Well, right, right. Yeah. Uh, so even coming in today, you, you probably just, uh. Oh, yeah. When yeah. I, when I picked it, I was like, he's gonna hate this one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we're not joking around here. No, no, like, I'm, you, I'm yeah, serious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't hoping that you were, but I right, right. kind of expected it. Right. I think I said last week that I, I've uh, I've had an inkling that you were going to be picking this at some point, and that I've sort of been dreading it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so uh, you, you brought it to me. It's a it's a thick ass book. It's like two hundred and seventy some pages, something like that. I think fifty <clears throat> of those pages are all just notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, appendices and references yeah. and. Uh, and I think, like, when you, when you first brought it over, I read, like, the first 50 pages or so, like, you know, that evening. And, you know, I was just gonna read, you know, a little bit at a time. And then the next day, I sat down to read it. And, uh, within two hours, I'd finished the book. Yeah. Well. Uh, so it's a quick read. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of pages that only have a couple panels or, right, or whatnot. Right. Um, yeah, there's a lot of notes, and I, I kind of skimmed them, even. Mm hmm. Didn't read all of them because uh, you know I got better things to do with my life. Than read all the notes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, some of them get repetitive too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so I read the first couple of chapters of this book, and uh, oh, I was pretty much uh, sticking with my my uh, uh, with your gut instinct that uh, yeah I didn't enjoy it. All right. Uh, and then it turned around around uh, page fifty or so. Yeah. I don't know why, and I don't know how. Because there is absolutely nothing that I can point to that's to say that I actually liked this book. But I certainly did not like it. Yeah? Yeah. Originally? No, I, I certainly didn't not like oh, it. Oh, you didn't not like it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In fact, I don't know how I feel about this book. It's, it, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> I know exactly what I mean. Um... It's one of those books where you read it and you're like, this is different from anything I've ever read. Yeah. And uh, I need to figure out how that makes me feel. Yeah. Or what, what, what I'm thinking. If, if this is a good thing or if this is a waste of time. Yeah. Uh, and, and also just the very topic of the book. I, I, I'm fearing. The conversation that uh, this is going to bring us to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Paying for prostitutes. Yeah, yeah. That is the plot of the book. Yeah. It's uh, Chester Brown deciding that uh, he no longer wants to have any kind of uh, romantic or uh, intimate relationship with a woman, uh, but still wants sex, so he just decides to, to start seeing prostitutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is uh, years in the, like, like... Like this, this book is set over a period of like fifteen years, years or something. Even? I think it was like nineties. Okay, yeah, six, ninety six to three or something. Yeah, and I think uh, it sort of ends around two thousand eight or so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, even then, uh, like like his his last uh, boyfriend girlfriend relationship is you know depicted in the book as mm-hmm. ending in ninety six, and I think it even takes him like three or four years to. Like finally go see a prostitute, right? So yeah, uh, <laughs> this was a, a lengthy endeavor for him. I yeah, guess. yeah, it's kind of a big chunk of his of his you know adult life. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> well, yeah. Uh, do you want to like uh, just talk about the plot a little bit more before we get into it? Like, or is that pretty much it? You know? It is kind of plot. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it's pretty much uh, his. Uh, I mean, it, it's. It, it's almost veering into the sort of David Heatley area of, you know... Here's every... Every prostitute I've ever yeah, known. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm guessing, like, it seems like he, you know, he just made a diary of of, right. his, of his adventures. Right. And, uh, and like, 
you know, since he had all the information down, you know, it seems like he just, like, there's some of them that, like, they mean nothing. Like, there's right, some, there's yeah. some chapters about certain prostitutes that, like, it doesn't really add anything to the story. No, yeah. And it's not unique in any special way, but they're there anyway. I think some of them, like, uh, you know, like, uh, the, uh, uh, like the one that, uh, he, he feels is like trying to scam him. Like, you know, yeah, that was only like two, three pages. But, right. You know, I mean, I, I think they're all unique. Uh, but yeah, certainly some of them could have been dealt without, you know, like, or like meshed, meshed into one because right. he said, uh, you know, like, you know, he, he didn't want to reveal any of their identities. So he changed their names and right. it's like, he could have meshed some of those together probably. Yeah. And, uh, he draws them all, uh, with, uh, black hair, uh, covers all their faces with, uh, word balloons and captions, or himself. Or has them just facing the other way. Right, yeah. Which I think is kind of strange. Uh. I mean, it, it, like, I know why, because, you know, he doesn't want any, like, identifying features right. revealed. But I'm thinking he could either, A, change those features, right. or B, um, I don't know. It's well, like, uh, I mean, I see where you're, what you're saying, and I kind of agree with you. Primarily because, I mean, he's an okay artist, mm -hmm. but you know, I mean, certainly he's not drawing photorealistic right. portraits of yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, that's that's my thing too. Like, even if he drew someone, right. like, like you know, his drawings of himself, you know. You're like, okay, you know, that's him. Well, that's his, his characterized version of himself. Yeah. You know, like, you have, you know, the version of Jason Young that you draw, mm -hmm. which, you know, is just, you know, how you draw yourself. That's you know, right. something you've done repetitively for years. And, you know, that's, that's what he has, and I'm sure, you know, like his... But no one would recognize him. Like, right. If they yeah. hadn't... Like, if it, if it was just, like, he wasn't a famous artist, and he just was some guy that worked at McDonald's and right. he drew himself, you know... I'm sure everyone that saw it wouldn't be like, oh, that's Chet yeah. from McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I know his, uh, his ex-girlfriend is, is kind of a celebrity in Canada, mm -hmm. but you know, I've never seen a picture of her, you know, I've, I've never seen the, the porn movie she was in. She was on a porn <laughs> Sort of. Oh, the year of the carnivore? No. Oh. Uh, it's called Short Bus. Oh, okay. I've and, heard of that. Uh, she, uh, she has like, a, a masturbation sequence and, uh, you know, Fucks a dude in it. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Sukian Lee. Mm -hmm. I, I met her once. I know you did. But uh, I've never seen her porn movie. Yeah. I have no desire to, because it just doesn't sound interesting right. otherwise. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, prepare to dust off your veto. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> uh, I will tell you this, uh, Year of the Carnivore is uh, becoming available on Netflix soon. Ooh, cool. Uh, so, you know. Huh? I'd like to see that. I'm sure you would. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, but yeah. But anyway, I mean, uh, so I mean, when he draws her, though, otherwise, you know, she's just an Asian lady, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I'm, it's like, is he adding some sort of mystique to it by not showing their faces, you know? Uh, or, yeah, I, I mean, it like definitely, I'm sure it affects the way you, uh, you know, view the character in the book. But not, uh, never seen their face. It's kind of mysterious, and I don't find it mysterious at all. I find it unrelatable. Yeah, and I find all of his art in this book to be unrelatable. Because uh, there's no like, there's no facial features. Everybody's exactly. Just, and and <clears throat> another thing it's that, inhuman. Well, he's very. He I think he's very clinical about everything. I mean, because I mean, obviously every panel is like exactly the same size. Right. And and if you notice, like, there's never close-ups of people. It's always, like, this pulled-back, right. like, detached kind of Mid-shots uh, or long shots. There. Yeah. yeah. He's got a very, like, detached kind of feel yeah. to everything that he does. Right. Uh, I will say that uh, there is one character in their... It's weird to call them characters since they're real people. Yeah, real people. Uh, there is one... Real person character in this book that I actually did find relatable. I know exactly who you're gonna say, because as soon as I read it, I was like, "That sounds like Eric." 
<laughs> Are you talking about when he says illustration is a chore sometimes? That guy? Um, Seth. I, Seth. He, yes. Yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> they're having this uh, conversation where, uh, um, you know, Seth's trying to, like, play devil's advocate, I think. Yeah. And, or, he, or that or, like, he's having the normal reaction that probably anybody would have if, you know, they find out one of their good friends right. is visiting prostitutes. They're like... They don't know exactly why, but they're like, this is wrong and something, he, I need to help him out of this. Right. So he's just, anything that he can think of, he's telling Chet. And one yeah. of the things is, uh, you know, he's like, well, don't you think that that's degrading to them? You know, don't you think they hate their job? And, and, uh, and, uh, Chet says, you know, you hate doing illustration work for a job, you know, for a job, but you do it anyway. And, um, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, uh, that reminded me of you because you, you're like, I hate drawing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and not just that, but, like, you know, just the whole moral stance that he takes. Just every time he appears in the book, he says something that rings true to me. Yeah. And, I'm like, yeah, I think that's kind of how I feel about this situation. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and yet still at the same time, like, like coming away from the book, you know, uh, I guess here's, like, sort of one of my problems with this book, is that clearly Chester Brown has an agenda uh, yeah. when it comes to this topic. Right. Uh, yet, like, I never feel that he makes his case for it. It it almost seems like he made more more of the case of it in the, the notes at the end. Right. Um... Which is kind of one of those things that, that, you know, I like to hold firm to is that, you know, if, if you're telling, uh, a story, uh, be it, you know, fictional or not, mm -hmm. uh, if you have to later go back and explain it, then you didn't do your job. Right. Um, unless my, my theories may be the, the actual comic portion, you know, the two thirds of it that's the comic or three fourths of it that's the comic is, you know, just, you know, here's what happened, and then the the case for why right. it should be, you know, why it's right is is the stuff they added later. But there are scenes where he's talking with Seth and Joe Matt and, right. uh, you know, his, his friend Chris or whatever. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, there, there are pages of conversation that they're having right. discussing, you know, the, the morality of prostitution and the legality of it. And any of those instances, he could try to make his case, you know, like like tweak events mm -hmm. to to get his point of view across. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, because uh, he's getting his view across. I mean, he he's down with prostitutes. Oh yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much his point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he but, thinks he thinks it should be decriminalized, right? Not regulated, but right. just not illegal, right? And uh, it, it just seems like, uh, he didn't do his job in, it, it, like, if I were writing this book, like, like, if it were me having these experiences, what I would want to try to do is not only just, you know, get my point across with it, but also try to make a reasonable argument so that when you're reading it, right. you're like, oh, okay, yeah, uh, I get it. Without having, you know, I, 50 yeah. pages of notes in the back. I, I think, I think I get a little more of that he got the point across than, than you're saying because, like, the whole early part of it is, is building up to this where, you know, like he's, you know, I think his point is, you know, he's witnessed all these things. He's had all these experiences. Like, you know, he's had these horrible relationships. He's watched and listened to horrible relationships. Right. He's, uh, you know, he got to the point where he was celibate and he was like considering paying for a photo with a, a former playmate. Right. And he was like, what's the boundary here? You know, why is that okay? And, you know, why is, you know, the next step of paying for actual sex? Right. And, uh. Well, I'm gonna just throw it right there. Yeah. It's not okay to get your picture taken with a former playmate. <laughs> for money? For money. Yeah. Or ever. Yeah. Even for free? Yeah. Aww. <laughs> Aww. So what do you. Do you have an opinion on on uh, prostitution? Because I mean, you've never had prostitutes, then, no, right? Yeah. Me and you, neither one of us. 
Um, not together or separate. Not together or separate. <laughs> uh, I mean, though, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Right, right. right. But, but uh, here in Ohio. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've never considered it. Never once popped in my mind, even uh, when I've had like two or three years stretches of not right. even going on a date. Right. Uh, never even considered trying to call an escort service or anything. Right. Um, not because I'm against it. I think, fine, whatever. But, uh, I've got no interest in it. Never have. I think that's pretty much my point of view on it. Yeah. Um, you know, cause, cause I am currently in that, uh, two, three year, uh, situation where it's been a very long time since I've, uh, been intimate with a woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, let alone any kind of date or anything like that. Uh, uh, and yeah, it never crosses my mind that, uh, oh, this is an option. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, yeah, it's not for me. <clears throat> um, as far as it being for other people, that's kind of where I start to get hazy. Yeah. Uh, like, I guess, for the most part, you know, if you're not bothering me, I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> I still kind of think it's just disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, like, I think it should be legal. I think, I mean, Chester Rowe makes a case and I kind, I, I'm 90, like 95% sh- sure that I believe him. Right. That he's happy. Uh, that, yeah, that yeah, this works yeah. for him. This is, this is his thing. And, uh, I'm 95, there's 5% of me that thinks he's lying. Right. Or that he's deluding himself. Right. But 95% of me thinks that that's not the case. And, uh, yeah, and if that works for people, I think that's cool. Go for it. Right. Whatever works. But I, I, yeah, it just, it's gross. Yeah. And, and, uh, I mean, I'm also coming from this, uh, the fact that I, Strongly suspect that my neighbor's a pimp. Yeah. And that, uh, maybe he's pimping out his girlfriend. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and they're disgusting human beings. <laughs> they are just awful. You've talked about it. You, you may have heard about them. Yeah, you may have heard them. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, like, yeah, I just, I can't imagine because cause if, if she is a prostitute, I'm pretty sure she's a streetwalker type. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just could not imagine seeing her and picking her up. Well, well, I mean, you never know, though. Some, there's yeah, diff- no, that's not really represented in this book at all. Right. Like, like, uh, like it's the, all like 22 hot, 20 year old hot Asians that he's having right. sex with, basically. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, actually, like that whole, the, the, the streetwalker angle is not even touched on in his book other than, like, initially when he his, decides to try to find one. Right. His, and, his, like, thoughts. Right, yeah. It's like, how would that work? That, that is one of my, oh, I don't want a tangent, but that is one of my favorite parts of the book. Just, like, the, him riding his bike around and, and, and finding, yeah, and, uh, like, just the, the, the part of me that loves voyeuristic things, um, and, and when I say that, I don't mean just like peeping through a keyhole, watching right, girls right, undress, right. just like watching people do whatever in their right. daily life. I love the fact that we get to watch all of this unfold in his mind, like, you know, how he went about it. And it's not just like it opens up with him, like, you know, fucking hookers through right, the whole right, book. Yeah. It's like his it's thought the, process. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Like how he, how he figured out how to do it. Like, right. uh, what he did wrong. Like, Things that he was like, okay, I'll never ask for a half and half again. Right, you know, yeah, like yeah. that sort of thing. Like I love that whole, you know, you're, it's like you're there with him, but you don't have to deal with any of the, yeah. the, the parts of it. Uh, I mean, it was still, I don't know. And, and, like, like he himself does not come off great. You know, oh yeah, uh, you know, just he's like that's the worst blowjob I ever had. You know? Well, that or like, uh, oh, I'm looking for a uh, petite 22 year old, and uh, she's clearly 28. Yeah, this is <laughs> gross. Yeah, you know, just that <laughs> like sort of like he's ordering off a menu. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the part that bothers me about the whole prostitution thing, as far as personally, like, um, like if I found out every girl I've ever dated 
was also a prostitute. Right. I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be disgusted because I was having sex with a girl who had sex for money. Like right. that's not, that's not what I find disgusting. What I would find disgusting is being involved in the process of like, I have to pay you to want to have any sort of intimacy with me. Right. And, and Chester Brown even, like, cause he's clearly not a fan of regular monogamous relationships. Right. And he, he comes across as saying, well, we all pay for sex somehow. Right. Um, and he's saying like, you know, I, I go do things with my girlfriend, like shop with her, or right. if I don't feel like going out to karaoke, I still go sometimes. Right. Um, and I'm paying for it, right. you know, but. To me, that is not the same as not just at all. handing somebody cash yeah. and saying, fuck me. Yeah, because, <clears throat> I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the, in, in, in any kind of relationship like, like, like that, you know, there's the give and take, you know, yeah, you may not want to go, you know, hang out at a bar, you know, on Friday nights with your girlfriend, but you do it because she likes to do it. Exactly. And you're not, Doing that because, you know, oh, well, you're going to get laid later because right. of it. You're doing it because you like hanging out with her because I want to be with her. Because I'm trying to build something. Right. Like, like if I met a girl on the street and she was dressed like a streetwalker and, and I was like, how much? And she goes, uh, you got to go shoe shopping with me and, uh, hang out, uh, karaoke two right. weekends in a row. I would be like, uh, deal. I mean, like, you know, like, that's, that would have a completely different feel to me than, right. than as far as like, well, this person that I care about likes to do these things. Right. And I want to make her happy and I want to spend time with her. Right. So it fulfills me to be a part of it. Right. And at the same time, you know, it, it's not one way. You know, she's hanging out with you, you know, doing stuff that you want to do. Exactly. And, and, you know, that maybe she'd rather be doing something else. Exactly. Because it, you're, you're working together. You're, 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 you're being a couple. And, and then Chester, I'm imagining Chester Brown would say, well, then it's a lose lose situation because right. you're neither one happy. Uh, but that's not true. No, like, yeah. I've, I've had, uh, I've only, I've, I've only had really close relationships, uh, with a few women over the years. Right. Um, oh, excuse me. But none of them have, like once it gets to the point where it's not, you know, it's not worth it. You right. just get out of it, you know. Right. Um, and, I, and you're not talking about. You're specifically not talking about like it's worth all the hassle, you know, to you know fuck each other. And the other right. Day, yeah. You're, you're talking about you know just just general happiness. Right. General happiness. You're both you know getting on each other's nerves. You know, mm. there's undue stress. Right. You know, just yeah. Then yeah. Get the fuck out. But, right. Uh... And, and he says, another thing he says is, uh, uh, I wanted to bring this up that, um, he, he, uh, he doesn't like monogamous intimate relationships because of the possessive quality that everyone feels. Right. And like how, you know, uh, you can't have an intimacy with a second person or the other person gets jealous or even right. if you're not having intimacy, but they're, they think that there's some sort of connection, like they get jealous, which, isn't a trait that's present in other types of like relationships like right. friends. And to me, that's wrong that's because wrong. Yeah. I've had friends that get pissed off if you, you know, are spending time with other friends. And yeah. I've had girlfriends that like, I've been dating my girlfriend. It'll be like two years and a couple weeks here. Right. We've never had one argument. Right. And, uh, and he's, you know, he's saying that that that's the exception to the rule that, you know, all of them, Possessive monogamous relationships result in uh, resentment, and right. but I think that's just his experience, and that I'm sure that's a lot of people's experience. I've had that experience. I've had that experience too, and and uh, you know, with with uh, my most recent ex, you know, I definitely had that experience. We you know had arguments, but at the same mm -hmm. time, you know, we, we loved each other very much, and I still love her. Mm -hmm. You know, and then and uh, she's you know, one of my favorite people in, in the world. And what it comes down to is there's something wrong with me, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, or, or, I mean, and and there's something wrong with her too. As I say, but <laughs> I think there, you know, it, it's not. You just have to find the right combination. 
Well, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's that. I think it's that, uh, that, uh, you know, for me, uh, I think that if I were to find someone new, I would probably have the same problems mm -hmm. uh, because it's me. You know, it, it comes down to me and, uh, I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh. That can be a problem. Yeah. If, uh, and, uh, in a relationship. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, I think, you know, that Chester Brown, that's his experiences, uh, I think it really comes down to, you know, there's a problem with him. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, cause even, like, I don't want to spoil the ending, like, how it turns out, I'm not going to, but, right. but, uh, even his solution to me, like, it's, it's begging for disaster. Right. Well, you see, uh, this, this is tough because I kind of want to talk about that. Yeah, oh, let's do it. Spoil it. Okay. We're going to uh, spoil it. Here's the ending spoiled, so. Yeah. Out. Um, basically at the end of the book, he, he sort of returns to monogamy. Yeah, I think that's even the, the title of that chapter mm -hmm. where he basically has found one prostitute that he wants to continue having sex with. Because he probably loves her. Because he probably loves her, right. And, uh, but yet, he's still paying her. She's uh, decided to be monogamous with him. With him. So, alright. <laughs> they, they live in Toronto, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh I'm imagining, cause, cause, uh, you've, you visited there before. It was funny, I've actually, like, the first street where he tries to pick up hookers right. was the, the street that, uh, uh, it wasn't the street that our motel was on last time, but it was like the cross street where like I always walked to get groceries. And I was like, oh my god, this is Chester Brown's horrid, horrid, uh, horrid, uh, stomping ground, yeah. Uh, but, you know, Toronto, uh, fairly, uh, metropolitan city, uh, -huh. uh, you know, modern day, uh, I'm imagining Canada or not, probably pretty pricey to live in. Yeah. Um, uh, if, cause, cause he, uh, like towards the beginning of, of his experiences, he, uh, he budgets himself, <laughs> uh, clinically as he does everything. Yeah. Uh, how many times he can visit a hooker per year, <laughs> per year, Yeah. you know, how much it would cost him on average. He's like, I could do it for, uh, maybe I'd better do it every three months yeah, yeah. Yeah, or three, three weeks. I think. Three weeks. Yeah, I think it is yeah. every three weeks, yeah. Uh, except for the period where, uh, he had, uh, Louis Real published. <laughs> yeah, and he had and, a uh, tour. He, like two years he went without. Oh man, that must have been the worst book tour ever. <laughs> <laughs> he just hated being there, I'm sure. I'm sure they were comic, uh, groupy girls, right? Uh, yeah, but he doesn't, he doesn't mention them in there. Yeah. I'm sure he would have. Well, it was because he didn't have to pay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's in the other book. Getting yeah. it, getting it for free. The sequel. <laughs> uh, so basically, by him becoming monogamous with uh, this this final prostitute, who he calls Denise, who he calls Denise, uh, who apparently, as of this publication, you know, was still monogamous with him. Yeah. Uh, basically, he is funding her entire life. Then. Yes, and uh, she is. Having sex with him. Right. That is weird. Um, to me, that, that's, to me, that's a warped, uh, definition of love because, yeah. as, uh, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm a gruff manly dude. I mean, people look at me and they think leathered cowboy type, you know, like, they're like, are you a mechanic or a wrestler? I'm, <laughs> I'm like, neither, sir. Oh, well, yeah. really? I yeah. thought you would say both. No, no, I, I'm straight up. <laughs> and I say, um, even though I have this gruff, manly exterior, I'm a romantic at heart. And I, be I believe in, like, you know, kind of traditional l love, you know? <laughs> so to me, that is a pretty warped sense of love, is, like, I'm in love with this person, so I pay them to have sex with me. Right. And they return the favor by taking my money and having sex with me. Right. That seems unhealthy to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like I said earlier... If it works for him and he's legitimately happy, fucking A. Go for right. it. Whatever works. But, I mean, like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, doesn't it seem at that point, though, that, that Denise 
has moved on from prostitution and is just flat out a crook. It almost seems because I can't wrong. imagine that him paying what two hundred dollars. I think it's about one eighty. Yeah, <laughs> about one eighty. Uh, you know, for an hour session, <laughs> uh, is paying all of her bills. Yeah, unless if, I'm like that's what I was thinking that too. I was like, does she have another job or does he visit her a lot more often than every three weeks? Right. Um, how's that work? And right. and also I had the thought. I got Chester Brown laid twice. <laughs> and, and he had enough to and he had enough to give her a good tip. Both times. Cause I gave him five hundred bucks in the middle of all this uh uh horn. Yeah, Man. all this horn. So that, <laughs> unbeknownst to me, I I totally got him laid twice. Good for you. Yeah. You should get a thank you. That's money well spent. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like Kickstarter. Yeah. You, know, you donate so much. It's, it's Cockstarter. <laughs> right, that's what it is. <laughs> you did donate so much, you get your name listed in the book. Oh. If, if I donated, like, if I donated a thousand dollars, I get a handy from his girlfriend. Uh, 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 Just kidding, Denise. Yeah. With air quotes. I... I don't know you, but, uh, yeah, it does seem like something's maybe right. foul there. Yeah. Like, and, yeah, and it, I mean, it's not like I'm um, supporting him, you know, throughout the whole, you know, pr- prior to Denise, mm-hmm. you know, when, when, you know, he was just paying for a blowjob. <laughs> <you know? laughs> right. uh, from, from, uh, women who he, uh, Vehemently uh, says are not sex slaves, right. and he gives all the reasons why. Right for everyone. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I, okay. I can see him deciding that okay, th- this is this is my monogamous relationship now. Mm-hmm. I just can't picture that. From again, we don't know this person. Right. Uh, I just cannot realistically picture that. From her side, right? You know, to choose to be monogamous with one John. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what bothers me. It's like it almost seems like, look, it's my girlfriend, and then right. she's like, yeah, yeah, give me some more money. Yeah. And like, I hope it's not that way, but yeah. I hope maybe they both just have what I consider a warped view of love. Right. And like, you know, I hope they're both happy, and I hope they both care for each other. Right. I really do, because right. I. I, like, part of me thinks, like, oh, God, this is going to go sour. Chester Brown's going to kill himself. Right. Like, and I hope that never happens because he is seriously one of my favorite artists of right. all time. And uh, storytellers, too. I mean, not just, like, his illustration, but right. I wish nothing but the best for him because, you know, selfishly so, because I want to see more work. work. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I would... I don't know if I'd want to check out anything else other than, uh, you know, by him. Mm-hmm. Think, Based on this. I think this is the only thing I've read by him. Mm-hmm. Um, primarily just because now I'm just always going to think of him as that guy that pays for sex. Yeah. You know. I could see you how, <clears throat> I could see how that would mar your, uh, right. you know, vision of and, and of them. I'm certainly, uh, I don't hate him on the level that I dislike a, uh, David Heatley. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, this was, this, I still don't know how I feel about this type that, of book. That, isn't that a sign of a good book, though? Yeah. When you're like, I can't just say, oh, this is, you know, I classify this as, you know, like this category over here. Right. Like, like there's parts of it that, you know, I really interested in. There's parts of it that are, like, you know, you don't agree with it all, and then there's right. parts of it that you, you like, question things, and, like, that's a sign of a, of a, of a good book, I think. Yeah. Uh, see, for me, a sign of a good book would be that, would I recommend this to anybody? And I don't think I could recommend this to anybody, but at the same time, I think it's worth reading. Yeah. That's, you just recommended it to people. <laughs> in, in sort of a, like, 
Like if someone said, "Hey, I'm looking for something to read," you know, what do you suggest? Paying for it would not be at the top of my list. But if they picked it up and said, "Should I read this?" I you'd say, be like, yeah. "Yeah, give it a try." Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I I definitely will say, as a, as just a fan of comics, it is not my favorite thing by him. Because like earlier you said, you know. But then there's part of me, you know, the part of me that loves autobio voyeuristic, right. re- rev- like revelatory stories. Yeah. This is pretty much. I've never seen anything as revealing as this right. autobio. Uh, Joe Matt book. Not even Joe Matt because his. Okay, now that's an interesting point too. I was thinking about this earlier today. If Joe Matt would have done this book, I think I would have liked it more. Okay. I think I think it would have been more entertaining, but I think it would have been a lot less thought provoking. Right. And is that simply just because that's what he does? Yeah, I mean, he does these autobio stories that are, you know, it's true and it's, like, gross and whatever, but right. they're just a lot more fun. They're a okay. lot more cartoony. There's, like, it's just a lot more... Even though the subject matter is is sometimes disgusting, it's, it's a lot more fun and, like, right. you know, whimsical. I think it's just his style, but... Right. uh yeah, I think I think I would have liked this story by Joe Matt more. Uh, I think I would have liked this story more if uh, Jim Lee did it. And there's collars on everything. Everybody needs a collar, <laughs> some knee pads. Yeah, well, definitely some knee pads. Chester so. Brown needed some knee pads yeah. a couple times. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I thought. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> gross. Uh, um, no, I, I think. I think if he would have drawn this in a more, uh, like I don't want to say cartoony, but but more fluid style, I guess. It's not not so like strict. Yeah. And and oh, it's very strict. Static. See, it doesn't seem static to me. Like I I can still see like the movement, but it's very like I feel very removed at the same time. Right, yeah. Like I'm watching it all from some sort of camera, like in a in a security room or something. Right, right. Yeah, there are some just angles that you know, are, are very uh, yeah, like a like a security camera. Uh, but but mostly like like he always draws himself with just a blank expression, just like he a draws, slit for a mouth. Yeah, all of his and I mean he's kind of a weird looking dude anyway. Uh, at least from the picture that's yeah. in the background. That, of that picture is creepy. Yeah, it almost looks like some photoshopped alien or yeah. something. Uh, but, you know, I mean, everyone else, you know, the, nobody, like, even when he and his friends are having arguments about this, you know, nobody changes expression. There's no eyebrows. There's no the, eyebrows. There's not even, you know, flailing arms yeah. or anything. Everybody's just sitting perfectly still. And, uh, there's one clever part that, that I thought was neat was, uh, uh, there's a, a conversation between him and Seth where, Obviously, I was psyched with Seth the whole time. Yeah. Also, because he's a snazzy dresser. He is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they're having an argument, and Seth says something to piss him off, and there's just a thought balloon with, like, a oh, thunderbolt. Yeah. A thundercloud, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. And then he, like, sort of clears up, and then, like, you know, reiterates his argument, but, like, without ever changing... His expression. Right, yeah. So it's like saying, like, he does have some things going on inside, right, and he yeah. just remains... You know, and it's weird, too, because I've met him three times at conventions over the years, and he's always smiling and, like, right. like he seems kind of, not animated like Jim Carrey, but, you know, he's right. he, he doesn't seem like the stoic, like, removed person that characters. he presents yeah. himself as. Yeah. Uh, and, like, even, uh, like, the one part of the uh, the notes that I read uh, was the, the section by Seth, where he actually sort of, uh, I guess... Uh, I guess he asked everybody he presented in the book, you know, to sort of uh, give their side of story uh, in the notes. But right. Seth is the only one that took him up on it. And uh, there's like a, a section where you know he he says that he calls you know it, well, a it's the only section that I read all the way through. Uh, but he says he calls Chester Brown you know the robot because yeah. he he doesn't express human emotions. Yeah. Uh, but then he turns around and said that actually he's like one of the funniest guys he knows and he's also usually pretty lively. He just chooses not to express himself that way. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm also going to say that my absolutely favorite 
100% top of the list favorite part of this book is in the notes. Oh, yeah? Uh, where he uh, talks about how uh, he had many conversations with Dave Sim. Yeah. And uh, decided not to have Dave Sim read a copy of this book because they had a falling out when uh, Dave Sim demanded that he sign an online petition <laughs> to, to be say that he was not a misogynist. Yeah. And uh, it just run didn't sign it. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, me and Brian John Mitchell signed it. Yeah. What a Brian John Mitchell. You did yours under duress, though. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, uh, I actually got a letter back from oh, him I remember, I remember bef- before I signed it. Before yeah. I signed it. Yeah. But yeah. 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 There was a little, <laughs> little debate on that, too. Um, man. Yeah. Seems like there was something else I really wanted to say about. This whole uh, this whole mess that Chester Brown's got himself into. Oh, what's he gonna do now? <laughs> it is it is funny though that uh, it kind of kind of makes me love Canada even more that someone can do this historical uh, representation of a you know historical f- character like Louis Riel, sure. and then immediately the next book they do is uh, uh, you know revealing that it, that all the hosies banging and. Uh, and still all these people show up at a library right. to uh meet him meet him and yeah. talk to him and it's it's totally okay. Yeah. yeah. Well he didn't have this book out by that point. It we were at least there. Uh, so yeah, maybe yeah. we'll see if he's there next year. Because, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean it seems it seems like this could be something that like could bite him in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that cost extra. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he would know. <laughs> um but I would imagine he even even him, who is the author of, you know, off the beaten path books, right. I imagine this even lost him some fans. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, because some people just are, they, they just grew up, you know, morally opposing this and from every respect. Right. You know, uh, like even uh, before we did this, like I you know, did a little research. I looked on Wikipedia about this book and just trying to get more of an insight, not from his point of view, but from you know outsider point of view. Uh, you know, like his publisher or whatever, and then like I read a couple of interviews with him, uh, and even like in the interviews, like you know, comment section, you know, at the end was just you know, automatically just filled with like this is a sick human being, it deserves to die, like all the horsey bangs, you know, yeah, and bullshit like that, and God hates pros, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, as as much as I'm. I'm opposed to prostitution, uh, but yeah, not from any kind of moral standpoint. Just ickiness. Ickiness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I certainly don't wish death on anyone who would. And, right. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm sure there are lots of clean. Like, oh yeah, I'm sure. There represent are. you know yeah. like perfect like in the back he has quotes from people that are like right. oh my clients are all really nice and yeah. like this makes me feel sexually empowered and right. I'm sure there are people like that but I mean we all know that if it was decriminalized every lazy right. fucking junkie yep. and dirty hoe bag and in, right. in the world that's that's their new job yep. they just got hired yep. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know how this makes me feel about him as a person. Uh, I think is pretty much where, I I would say this book is good. Uh, but I don't know how I feel about the author of this book. Well, you're always saying, you know, it's easy to separate the, uh, the, uh, work from the... Yeah, (laughs) but when your work is your life. Yeah. Literally. It's hard to, it's hard to separate. Yeah, um... I mean, I guess I'd probably read something by him again. I mean, he's he's a good storyteller. Uh, I certainly was never bored by any parts of this book. Uh, I mean, you know, it took me two hours to read it, so it was it was yeah. engaging. Yeah, you it's know. a page turner kind yeah. of. Yeah, uh, I will say that uh, I think I've said before on the show that like you know I never want to read or watch any like supplemental material for anything that we review anymore right. because. Uh, it usually changes my opinion on, on how I feel. But it didn't this time? Uh, no, it did. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I read, you know, e- even Robert Crumb's introduction uh, sort of just got me off on a bad foot with this book. Yeah. And then Chester Brown had, like, a, a three-page, you know, prologue, uh, you know, written piece uh, that, that just sort of already put me in the mind frame of, what an ass. <laughs> 
And, and it did take me like 50 pages to, to actually start liking it. Right, yeah. It, it is, it is weird to me. Like, I, I'm, I just imagine him sitting there drawing all these panels of him, like, from behind with some, some girls, you know, like, legs in the air. Right. Like, isn't that, does that make him, I, I hope it, at least that makes him laugh a little bit. Like, right. you know, like, I'm drawing my, my ass fucking this whore. <laughs> and someone's gonna read it. Right. Oh, this is great. You know, like, cause I mean, that's in there like 50 times. At know? least. Yeah. 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 And then it's gotta be sort of like empowering or like, right. or, or just fun, you know? Or at least feeling like, you know, he's pulling one over on somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like, you're gonna pay to watch me have right. sex. Yeah. 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 So, uh, wow, wow, we, we, he is the prep student worthy of the John. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. And I know he said that he doesn't like the title of this because, yeah. uh, you know, the publisher suggested it. Right. And, and it implies that he has some sort of comeuppance at the end. Right. Which, uh, you know, as we've Perhaps maybe he will. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do think, uh, um, oh, oh, shit, I just lost it. Paying for it. Uh, um, oh, wow. It's gone. It's gone. It just disappeared. <laughs> well, uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a break. Uh-huh. Uh, cause, uh, I got a piss like a racehorse. Okay. And, uh, maybe in that time you'll, uh, I'll think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. All right. Hey, welcome back to Gutter Trash. Hello. So that was the thing I was going to try to say. Right. Um, it, just the title paying for it. Right. Um, and like, you know, like I said, the publisher came up with that, that title. Um, when I, when I first saw the blurb and previews about this and I, and I ordered a copy, um, and I took it home and I, you know, once it came out, I took it home to read it. I had no idea. Like I was, completely not prepared for the type of story this was. Okay. I really thought it was going to be a lot more, like, like not that he's known for a whimsy, but I thought it was going to be more like, I went through this crazy period in my 20s right. where I did something and, like, here's me. Oh, <laughs> oh I fucked up. And, right. like, here's, here's me talking about it. Like, I never, ever would have thought it would have been something as, like, you know, here's my new life plan. Right. You know, right. Like, you know. <laughs> it really took me for a loop. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know much about his work, uh, or him. 
uh, I kind of thought the same thing that that it was like, uh, yep, this is what I did when I was uh, younger. Yeah, you know, just a stupid kid, and uh, my, here's me reminiscing. My wife laughs about it now. Yeah, 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 yeah but uh, no, it's like, oh, this happened last year. Yeah, and it's probably <laughs> it's gonna still happen happening. until I die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh. I would have to say, because, well, I don't know, because he's 50, 51, something like that. Uh, that sounds right. Yeah. Because uh, it was like 40 when it all started. Right. So, yeah. so uh, I mean, he's, you know, I mean, I'm 30, 32, almost 33. I'm kind of set in my ways. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine that, uh, I guess, at, at the age of 50, uh, he, uh, I wanted to say that maybe later on he'll he'll kind of realize that uh, this isn't working out yeah. the way he wanted it to, uh, oh, or, or maybe he just will eventually feel the need to to do something different. But I think at the age of fifty, that's when you start to become a stubborn old man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And what happens if you know, air quotes, Denise says like, yeah, I, you know, I need to, uh, I need to. Go on vacation, so I started, you know, banging, letting a couple other dudes bang me. In fact, it's been going on for months now. Right. Um, you know, what happens then? Right. Cause, cause he has emotionally invested in her now. Right. Even, and financially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does he just melt down at that point? Right. Yeah. I don't know. I hope not. I, I hope not either. I hope know? it never happens. Yeah. I, you know, like I said before, I, I wish nothing but the best for him. Right. It just seems unhealthy to me. It seems like it's not gonna. Right. Or if he does happen to, you know, reevaluate, uh, his, his, uh, you know, not so much his stance, I guess. I mean, you know, he has his opinion and, uh, it's valid. Mm-hmm. You know, and then, you know. It's hard to argue with all the oh, yeah, stuff I, he puts forth other than the fact that, like I said earlier, uh, everybody would have that job. Right. Everybody that you don't want to have that job would have that job. Right. And there would be a lot more disease. There would be a lot more, you know. Right. Because he's saying, no, don't regulate it. So it's like, it's not like the government's testing these people. And, right. You know, and, and, you know, he's saying it's not fair that they would have to regulate that. You right. Know? Um, but, you know. you know, I mean, the government regulates a lot of things. Right. And for the best, I would say. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you don't want, yeah, you don't, you don't want people with diseases having sex for money. Right. I mean, that's just. I don't want people with diseases, uh, you know, pumping my gas. <laughs> uh, definitely not pumping your ass, though. Definitely yeah. not doing that either. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, you know, people at restaurants, you know, uh, you know, they, they have to take precautions and, and do certain things, and, and if they don't, they get fired or written up, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, tattoo artists. Uh, tattoo yeah. artists have to be, you know, licensed and, and you know. Right. And, yeah. so uh, have to meet certain uh, cleanliness right, know, yeah. quotas or whatever. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that maybe that's not a terrible thing to have happen. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, if you're going to do that. Plus, like, uh, you know... Drug addicts with eight kids right. in their apartment probably wouldn't be hookers at that point. Right, yeah. yeah because they couldn't apply for the hooker license. Right, or, yeah. Or couldn't pay, afford it or whatever. Right. I don't know. I don't know. It's not, it's definitely not a like, here's the easy answer to yeah, all yeah, these questions, yeah. but it, it's a really, it's really cool that something, you know, makes you think that much. Right. Uh, and, uh, especially in a book about fucking. Right. Uh, uh, damn it, what was I gonna say? Should we take another break? Uh, hey, hey, do you need to pay? Uh, oh, no. Uh, damn it. Uh, um, uh, I did know a friend, I had a friend who, uh, uh, got to the point where he told me he was, you know, like, he, he couldn't get a date. Right. And he's like, you know, actively pursuing dating. Right. And he couldn't get one and he was so frustrated. He was like, I, he's like, I'm to the point where I'm going to look for a hooker. Right. This is a couple of years ago. Um, no longer friends with the guy, so I don't know if that ever happened, but, right. um, because he was actually, I'm a like, hooker. I'm like, excuse me, you're what? Get out of my life, sir. <laughs> no, no, he just, uh, always showed up at my house drunk and like threatening. Oh, threatening. Is this, uh, I, I don't want to say his name. I'm not going to say his name, but, uh, this is the kid, I believe the, uh, very first time you and I ever had drawing night, you had to go pick him up from jail? That's him. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. See, I don't talk to him anymore. Right. I wish him the best. I hope he's uh, got out of that, but I'm done. Right. You know? Yeah. I've, I've tried, I've helped him out enough that, uh, you know, he's, he's burnt that bridge. Right. But I wish him well. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if he ever did end up with the hookers or not. Right. No, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't, I wouldn't say I'm actively, uh, trying to date anyone at this point in time. I think I'm just sort of, uh, uh, hit that point where, uh, it, it's probably just a severe depression where I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm just, uh, it's never gonna happen for me at this point anymore. Uh, and, and I'd like to get laid. Yeah. But I don't feel like putting in the effort or the time. Or the money. Or the money. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, like I said, prostitution has never crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and, and, uh, I could have the bluest of the bluest balls. <laughs> and, uh, it'll just never occur to me that that's an option for yeah. me. Uh, and, uh, and then, yeah, I would, uh, you know, I'd rather just have a girlfriend at some point, but, uh, at the same time, you know, kind of okay not having one either. Right. But, yeah. Uh, I got shit to do. Yeah. I got yeah. Two podcasts. I got, uh, you got a drawing a day, I do. You don't need a bitch bring me down. No. You got 99 problems already. Fuck yeah. <laughs> this thing I need is some woman telling me that, uh, you need to, to go sing karaoke. Oh, no, my God. Friend. Tell me about I'm it. I'm like, I got a sketch I gotta do today. That's right. <laughs> of course, you could totally sketch a karaoke. I've done that plenty yeah, of times. Yeah. <laughs> I can't sketch in loud place. Hmm. And I think that's also part of my problem is I don't like leaving the house anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So that's uh, probably another reason why uh, I'm it's not actively seeking out it, a, a girlfriend. As I say, it's, it's hard to pick up the chicks inside of your house. Yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it really is. Yeah. So there's there's your catch-22 right there. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like we hit the nail on the head. Right. But like I said, I think I've uh, come to terms with that, and uh, I'm okay with uh, not leaving my house and uh, not meeting any chicks here. Yeah. 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 Well, that's cool. <clears throat> but again, uh, as I also mentioned, uh, you know, there's something uh, deeply wrong with me, and uh, maybe if I can fix that, I can uh, maybe start leaving the house again. And we'll maybe I'll meet someone. That's but sounds I'm like a goal. I'm certainly not going to, uh, you know, peruse wanted ads. You're not going to go on Turb? Yeah. Uh, is there a, I guess, uh, well, that's Toronto. Yeah. So is there a Derb? <laughs> <laughs> Dayton, Dayton. Uh, I don't know, I forget what it stands uh, for. Yeah, Escort know. review something. Yeah. yeah. Bureau, or I don't know. Board. Board, yeah. Yeah, I love, I love the fact that he's like all on the internet writing reviews for hookers, like, uh, sloppy blowjob. Uh, <laughs> does anal though. Yeah. A plus. <laughs> it's, uh, it's weird, cause, uh, I remember when, uh, when, when our good friend Joe, uh, got married. Uh, saying, cause, cause he met his wife via, uh, an online dating service. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he said that, you know, well, maybe, uh, those online dating services should have, you know, reviews. Like, like Amazon. You know, like, like, uh. Oh, your product review? Yeah. Like, like, uh, you know, he got his, uh, his wife and now he's happy, you know, four stars. <laughs> but it's like, well, can you really, you, you married her, so obviously, you know, you like the product. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and nobody else can get one now. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. It's not like, yeah, try her. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. not like that, yeah. <laughs> She'll marry you, too. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is weird. And, like, even some of the prostitutes talked about how they wouldn't read the reviews because they're like, right. I just feel weird people describing what I do. Right. Well, I think, uh... <clears throat> I think any great artist, you know, doesn't really want to read the reviews yeah. that people leave. Right. Because right. what if they don't like them? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I freak out whenever I do a Brian John Mitchell comic and someone compares me to Jim Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I just read a review of uh, Monthly. Oh, yeah. Uh, a new one, and it was favorable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they really liked the art, too. So there was a good twist, and, like, art was good. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> I read a review of, of two books. One of them was monthly. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe, I think maybe the other one was, uh, Star, the one that Kurt did. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the musician. 
that or it was maybe one you did. I don't know. Maybe No, maybe it was the one Pat did. I don't know. I don't who, know these who things. Who knows? Who knows? I just yeah. focus on me. Oh, yeah. Right. Clearly. <laughs> uh, but, like, yeah, they reviewed the other one first and talking about how, uh, like, there are some pages that, uh, you know, just have weird bits of, of, like, you know, dialogue or description that don't really fit the illustration and, like, you know, it's hard to, you know, make an entire comic out of when, you know, stuff like that. And I get to my book where, you know, I actually, you know, reworked the, the script Brian gave me and then, like, you know, uh, merged a bunch like, of pages yeah. together and then put, like, you know, dialogue mm-hmm. on one page and then a drawing on the other. And, uh, they said that, uh, when I did that, that it wasn't comic book enough. Really? Yeah. That, uh, that's not how a comic works. So they, they want somewhere in between the two. I guess so. Which, uh, I don't think you can get. Yeah? Ooh. Yeah. Oh. It's one or the other, folks. It's a challenge. When you're dealing with a comic that's an inch by an inch. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. There's not a ton of room to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Hey, nothing against Brian John Mitchell, you know, but, uh, you know, to, it's everything against, uh, the, uh, the people who read them and criticize them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially those that read them. Just why? Why do you guys do that? Right. Just collect them, bag them, and board them. Exactly. Save, save them till they will be worth money when I'm dead. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Which will be probably next year. <laughs> oh. Wow, that's a fast investment. Yeah. High yield or whatever they oh, call yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And limited quantities. That's true. Small yeah. press. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I forget how we got on that tangent. We're talking about Chester Brown's butt and penis. Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you see his butt a lot. Yeah, you do. Flat, flat, little skinny butt that yeah. he's got there. Yeah. You see his cock a lot, too. Yeah, you see it a little bit. Yeah. It's not huge. No. But yeah. Even some of the girls are coming on it. Sure. Made me feel good. Because I've got the tiny little cock as well. <laughs> Maybe it's a comic artist thing. Yeah. You tiny think, cocks? Yeah, you think Tom McFarlane's got a tiny little cock? Oh, the tiniest. Really? Okay. <laughs> wonder if he goes to the same Canadian... I bet he has the same Canadian prostitute. Or at least not not Denise, I'm not saying that, but I mean, because she's... One of them. Yeah, but yeah, one, of the, yeah. one of the, you know... Uh, please don't sue us, Tom McFarlane. Yeah. Please do not sue us. <laughs> he is a happily married man, very successful, and uh, there's a reason he has a character called the Violator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only balls he's slinging around are Mark McGuire's. <laughs> oh. So yeah, paying for it. Paying for it. I think this is the longest we've ever talked about uh, any one thing. Yeah. Ever. And not just, like, on the show. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're modern people with the short attention spans. Yes, we, we get are. easily distracted. Because <laughs> sometimes... Ooh, is that Scarlett Johansson? Eh? Yeah. What were we talking about? Um, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The full last four seconds now. <laughs> Which is uh, usually our attention span. Um, yeah, it's worth a read. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's a good book. I think that's ultimately what I've come down from. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a good book. Just, uh, I mean, obviously, if it can make us focus for over an hour. That's something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> even if he never gets prostitution decriminalized, he's, <laughs> he's made us jump on the right track for almost an hour. Probably an over an hour. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh. So what else is going on? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't even, I don't even, I was going to try to like tell some story about what happened to Mavericks today, but we don't have to. Uh, if we're, if we're, uh, we're already like hour, two hours in or yeah, something. Go for it. <laughs> today was, well, today was just one of those weird days where, uh, you know, something happens where you don't expect to happen. And today is, was Jack sent me to an auction just out of the blue because he read that they had, comics there and uh, and uh and some old like figurines and things like that and so i drove out to the auction it's in fairborn and i get there and i and i go looking around and he you know he's like he's like here's 700 dollars in cash and you know here's a check if you need more because you know they've got a lot of old stuff and like you know it doesn't say what era the comics are from but you know there's a lot of like 50s you know vintage 
like lunch boxes and toys and stuff. Um, so I get there and it's all nineties quarter books, the whole thing, all crap. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, just like the worst stuff, right. like night stalkers, Youngblood. number one. Yeah. yeah like yeah. stuff like that. Just like yeah, the bottom of the right. barrel of quarter books. Right. Not like something where you're like, ooh, this is an old quarter box. Right. You know, a dog-eared watchman number five? No, right, 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 like, right. not like fucking quarter books. Uh, was, was Night Stalkers number one bagged? Uh, I didn't see the bagged oh. issue. Oh. It might have been a different issue, but it, might, it was probably not even number one. It was like number five or something. You know, <laughs> like, uh, Dark Hold and stuff right, like right. that. You know, just like, yeah, not Dark Stalkers. That's the, uh, that's the, like, video game, right? Uh, I'm thinking of Night Stalkers. I don't know. I said Night Stalkers. Oh, Night Stalkers. Okay. You said Night Stalkers. Okay, did I? Yeah. You said Dark Stalkers. Uh, you did. <laughs> when you got confused. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was all, like, Captain Atom and Firestorm. Right. And it was just, you know. I love the Captain Atom. I love the Firestorm. We should have had your quarter ready. <laughs> mm, because uh, that's probably what they sold for. I didn't even stay for that, but... But he also said, he's like, well, he's like, I also really want all these, he's, re- Jack's into Western stuff, you know, like Gunsmoke and, right. and all that crap. And, uh, and he's like, bid on these, uh, old Western toys for me. He's like, they're like these hollow tin toys from like the fifties or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. And, uh, he looked them up on, on the internet, on eBay and what they'd sold for. And well, he, eBay is the internet. eBay is the internet. Is your email? Is yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all the same, <laughs> according to Jack. And and he had me. He wrote down prices like a range, like if they were in good condition or okay condition. And I went out there and I looked at them, and they were, you know, they had all their pieces, like you know, because they come with separate guns and hats and horses, and they were all there, but they were kind of scratched up, you know, like it, you know, they'd been around since the fifties, and like there's like paint off their faces and their legs and whatnot and i and i called him i told him i said you know you know they're they're there and they're complete but you know they're not in great shape and he goes well he's like he's like yeah bid uh like half of the the really good price then and and uh and he wanted me to, to bid on him i was like okay and i asked the guy i was like so you know hey you know i got there like half an hour before the auction started so i could look at everything right. and i asked the auctioneer i said so you know I, i'm only interested in one this one thing that you guys have i was like can i you know can you do like an absentee bid can i just put a bid in and leave and they're like no you have to pay today you know we don't we don't do that and uh i was like okay well you know can you tell me when you might get around to a certain item and uh he's like well he's like tell me which one it is and i'll make sure we do it like half an hour in and i was like oh, okay so I, I showed him i was like this lot here and he's like okay and he's like yeah about half an hour into the auction we should be able to get to it <clears throat> and i was like okay and so this was like this was like at almost, it was like quarter till five. And so the auction starts at five, supposedly. And I sit there, I got me a good seat, like third row. And I sit there, the, the, the hand of the clock is just turning and turning and turning. And like five thirty comes around and like the auctioneer's not even in the room. And I was like, man, what was going on? So I like went and walked around and like I found him. He was like in another room on the back that I didn't realize they had. And he was, auctioneering back there and uh and like there was like a motorcycle and like just uh, like all these toys and like all this glassware and all this shit and and i was like oh man you know they're they're nowhere near done and and so i called mavericks and i was like look i i'm not gonna be back anytime soon probably i was like i'm gonna call jack and see if he still wants me to, to stay and bid on these so i called jack and he's like oh yeah definitely stay yeah definitely stay and i was like okay so i sat there for like another half an hour and eventually he comes into that room. So I'm, so I've been here like an hour and a half already just staring at these Roy Rogers and right. Dale Evans and, uh, Lone Ranger and Tonto toys. And, um, and so eventually like they get, they get to, uh, the auctioneer in that room and they, they sell like all these Indian blankets and like broken coffee, coffee makers and grinders and all this stuff. And, uh, <laughs> people are buying it all. And then they get to the, the Western toys. And instead of doing, like, they're all in the same box. And instead of doing, like, the box, they do them individually. And, uh, and, like, you know, they start, they're like, your choice, you know, you pick whichever one you want. You know, we'll start one up for bid. And, uh, they start bidding on it. And Jack has told me, you know, if they're really nice condition, you could bid 40, maybe 50. 
Um, but, he, but you know, they weren't, so he said bid half, which is like 25 or 30. Right. So I sit there and I, and I like, I open the bid, like, he, you know, he's like $10 and a bid and then some other guy that's 20 and it goes up and up and you know, and I hit the $30 mark and, uh, or no, yeah, yeah, I hit the like $25 mark, which is a half for it. Some other guy bids 30 and then some other guy bids 40 and then, and, and, and apparently the way they do it is the guy that got the, you know, first choice, he goes up there and he can take as, as little or as many as he wants at that price as long as he takes one. Right. And so he takes all of them except for one. And, uh, and I was like, ah, well shit, should I bid on the one? And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll bid on the one. And then, so like then, you know, when they go back to the auctioneer and, um, I bid on the one, you know, for like 15 bucks and all of a sudden it pops up to some guys like $50 and, and like, and it just, I was like, what? Seriously? And, uh, and so some other guy won that one too. And I was just sitting there and I was like, and, and like, they're bidding on these cannons while I'm like sitting there going, seriously? Like they were, he, he's guys fast, you know? And he's doing that whole like, and I can't even understand him, you know? And, um, and so I just leave and I've been there like two and a, two and a half hours almost, you know? And it, it was just like, I was like, what, what another, just waste of time, you know. Like, I don't know, <laughs> but at least at least I got out of Mavericks for a while. I got to drive around, and, right, you know, right. I got paid for it. So yeah, you got seven hundred dollars in your pocket. I forgot to put it back in the register. Yeah, so so if you want to go out for drinks, or something, yeah. well, you want to get some horse. Hell yeah! yeah awesome. <laughs> Is your neighbor awake? Huh? We'll, we'll wake him up. We'll find out. Yeah, for seven hundred dollars, <laughs> hell yeah, she's awake. <laughs> See, I, I bet I got nothing. I didn't wow. buy anything. I was there like two and a half hours. Sounds like a fucked up way to run an auction, though. I mean, you know, I just always assumed I've never been to one, but you know, I just always assumed that you know you had a lot. And that's, yeah, you know what you were bidding on exactly. You know, thing in that lot, that little box, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I was like, I calculated up. I would have. I went as high as ninety. Right. And, uh, they ended up going for like 300. So it's it crazy. <laughs> and they were lame toys. They were like, they were just like flat metal or not flat, but you know, like they unposable metal, like, right. and their legs are all spread out so they can fit on a horse and right. they're hollow and they're just like all scratched up and their faces are terribly molded. And it was just, <laughs> it was awful. Fun times at by all. Yeah. <laughs> and and the motorcycle who they said would not start they can't figure it, they don't know what's wrong with it went for like it was at six hundred dollars when I was walking out of the room and I was like you know out of the the room that I wasn't supposed to be in I was like what you know some recently someone buy a motorcycle with a sidecar for fifty dollars really <laughs> really oh well, man <laughs> man you see it just goes to show you what they these things go for at auction yeah. Oh, well, there was even a guy there because I was looking at the comics, and uh, he was one of our customers. And he's like, "Are you gonna bid on these?" He's like, "I was thinking about bidding a little bit on." Them. I was like, "You can have them, buddy." I was like, "We're not." I was like, "I'm not touching the comics." And he's like, "You know, I've seen some of these p- people at these auctions just like bid on flats of comics just like this, where there's like ten, literally, you know, quarter comics, right. ten of them in a box." And he said, people will bid like 20 or $30 on them because they have no idea what they're bidding on. Right. They just, they're just like, ooh, you know, this might, I've heard action number one's worth millions of dollars, you know, <laughs> and here's 10 comics right, for yeah. 25 you know. So, I bet, I bet if you wanted to get rid of a bunch of just shit, you should like contact an auction and uh, yeah. get them to do your comics. <clears throat> when my, uh, when my parents, uh, well, my grandparents, uh, my grandmother had died, and my grandfather was, uh, we moved him to a home because he had uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, so my parents went to his house and you know, cleaned it out, and then they decided that they were going to have an estate auction. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they, like, they, they basically just gathered up all this crap, and you know, cleaned it up as much as they could, and then they threw away a whole bunch of stuff, and, uh, you know, they had this auction. Uh, <laughs> and, uh... I remember my dad saying, because they found uh, two uh, baptismal gowns, uh, one for him, one for his sister, and, uh, like, one of them was just in, like, rough shape, and so they just threw it out, and then the other one they cleaned as best they could, and they said it was still 
looked, you know, tattered and, and right. crappy. And it sold for like three hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like a fifty year old <laughs> baptism. Yes. Yeah. So, so is that something that you wear when you're getting baptized or the preacher wears? Oh, uh, the, the the baby wears it. Oh, okay. Why would they have the preacher's baptismal? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Might have had a preacher in the family, you know. No. Nah. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, wow, that's crazy. So it's like baby sized even. Yeah. It's not even huge. No. no. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I'm gonna have an auction with all my crap, I think. All my yeah. comics. It's a way to do it. It's uh yeah, they they make quite a bit of money, uh, on just old crap, like old license plates. That's how my grandpa had like in his uh, basement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my dad used to collect license plates too. Our garage used to have like thirty license plates in it. Yeah. Strange stuff. It is strange. All right. So, uh, feel like, uh, getting out of here. Yeah. yeah. We got, uh, $700 worth of drinking to do. That's right. <laughs> I'd say like $200 worth of drinking and 500 worth of whoring. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sounds fair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you got a movie to pick. I do. I guess I should pick one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually have a couple in mind. I think I'm going to pick one that I'm pretty sure you already have. Yeah, yeah. And I've almost picked it like three other times. Um, but for whatever reason, I just wanted to see something different every time. But, uh, I, nothing's really popping in. Like, I always have such trouble picking movies for some reason. I was, uh, have no trouble picking movies. So weird. Too much trouble picking comics. So weird. I'm just so the opposite. Um, can we just do it where I just pick another comic? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I want to see a movie that I think you own called Teeth. Nope. You don't have it? Nope. Oh. Are you vetoing it? Nope. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Okay. Have you seen it? Nope. All right. You want to do it? Yeah. All right. Let's watch Teeth. All right. Cool. All right, then. Teeth it is. Yeah. Next week on the gutter trash. That's right. That's us. Mm-hmm. Thanks for hanging around if you managed to make it this far. Yeah. We uh we really took a, a huge nosedive in quality towards the end. Here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh We talked about license plates and yeah. baptismal gowns. I mean <laughs> how much more entertaining do you want? <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, I guess if you're one of those folks who think we uh, meander around too much, this is one of the best episodes we've ever done. <laughs> yeah. And if you just, like, listen to us, um, making asses out of ourselves, then this is the worst episode we've ever done. It's your choice. It's your choice. There's no in-between here. Mm-mm. <laughs> All right, we'll be back next week with teeth. Unless we get too drunk and, and syphilis up. up right yeah. There. Because, you know, that shit ain't regulated, you know? Right. (laughs) Uh, Goodbye. You can subscribe to Gutter Trash at iTunes or directly at guttertrash.net. If you go to iTunes, please leave us a review. You can email us at eric at guttertrash.net or jason at guttertrash.net. For more info, you can find us on Facebook. Or you can go to seanborn.net or buyerbeware.guttertrash.net. Listen to our sister podcast, League Night, at league.guttertrash.net. Thank you for listening. Until next time. <laughs>